the mess. Now, of course, it will be a thorough investigation, but we're dealing with probability. So we calculate using Bayes' theorem to reverse back and answer the question, P of phone given A. And after the relevant calculations, which by now you should be very familiar with the Tableau approach, very easy to tabulate, multiply and get the middle, sum it down, and then divide cell by its own column sum to get the posterior probability. And that number appears to be given A, right? So we look at this column A. What's the probability that phone has or uh, will occur, right? Uh, the way we say it. Uh, what's the probability that the vote came in through phone? Well, it's 0.75. So what do we make of that? Compared with 0.25 uh, after rounding. Yeah? Uh, so of course, we'll, if we were to make a bet, we'll say, I'm willing to say that it is, it must have been through phone. So remember this, this is already passed, right? Because we know the vote, it must have either come in through phone or SMS. So we're not trying to predict, but we are trying to discover the unknown fact, right? Did it come in by phone or SMS? So now we say, okay, I'm willing to say it is true phone. But are you right? You're still not sure about the fact, right? So there is still a chance that you are wrong. So you're very eager. So was I right? Was I right? Was I right? And because you didn't know the fact, you're just making a guess. Even though you're very confident, you're still making a guess. And that gives rise to a sense of probability. And that's totally legit in calling it a probability because we are guessing the unknown. All right. So it doesn't have to be into the future, where future obviously is unknown. But the important thing is that it is unknown. So it could have happened in the past, but to the extent that we didn't know the fact, then there is a probability that it is true or it is false. So up till now, we are looking at uh, examples where the credibility matrix right, is uh, complete or is the same as the state of nature. It need not be the same. And sometimes we have seen that it doesn't even add up to one because there's I3 or I4 that for all matters that is of interest in this discussion uh, is not important at the moment. So we never even tabulate that. Here's one last example where we say, okay, sometimes we cannot even uh, get those probabilities. Okay, given uh, S1, S2, S3, what is P of I1, P of I2? We cannot even get them. Maybe because it's impossible to get. Maybe because it's charging us a lot to get that. Maybe because it takes a long, long time, etc. Right. So on paper, in theory, it looks very nice. Just fill up the table. There are, of course, practical considerations where things might become difficult. So in this case, suppose we spend quite a lot of money to buy these results, right? P of S1, uh, P of high given S1, P of high given S2, S3. And we get this column only. Can we still predict, right? Answer is yes. Can we still apply Bayes' theorem? Answer is yes. It's like saying there's I1 and I2. Uh, but it's floating somewhere. We don't even bother to draw that that box. You know, we, we don't know I1 and I2 where the boundary is. We don't care. We just care about the uh, uh, drawing the box around I3 very carefully. And that's it. Yeah. So if we do that, then we tabulate it accordingly. But definitely you must have your prior probabilities and then you multiply accordingly. And in the working box here, the IJ intersect with SI, uh, you we can only get the third column. So we add up only the third column and we can only divide by the third column. So totally fine. And we can only get posterior probability for the third column. And what's the third column? The third column is given that the reading is high, the reading. So what's where's the where's the consultant? The consultant is the seismic experiment. So the experiment is going to yield certain readings summarized as low, medium, or high. So if you think about the experiment as a consultant, consultant is going to say low oil, medium oil, high oil. Now notice that this is not exactly the same description as S1, S2, S3. But you get the idea, right? Like low to no oil, medium to some oil, high to much oil, yeah, something like that. But also it gives rise to the idea that it doesn't have to correspond with consultant says S1 will happen strictly. 
when we started discussion, I gave this frame of mind to think about it because then it kind of grounds us to understand why we will have this I1, I2, I3. But given more and more examples, as you can discover now, they can actually be all over the place, which is why it makes Bayes theorem all the more very powerful and useful, a very general and easily applied to many cases. So now we ask, given that the site gives a high reading, consultant says I3, right? Consultant says uh, much oil will occur, right? There's high oil. What are the revised probabilities? At first, at first we think that um, the chance of having much oil based on looking at so much experience that our oil company has gathered, right? We will drill and drill and drill. Uh, large and small, more uh, large and small drills. We find that uh, ten percent of the time there's a lot, a lot of oil. Uh, we will define what what it means by a, a lot, but we know that ten percent of the time there's something to be excited about. Now we make a reading, and how accurate is the reading? In the past, whenever there's no oil, it gives a reading of this. Some oil, the chance is this. A lot of oil, it gives a chance of this. Right. It, that means it's quite accurate when it comes to much oil. Now we test a d d d d d d. It says a lot of oil. Should we get excited? That's the whole premise of doing this calculation. Should we report to our bosses and say congratulations? But before we do that, let's do our posterior probability, right? So we do the calculation. The posterior probability is given that the reading says it's high. The chance of having a lot of oil is 75%. Okay, now you might say, is that high or low? I think it's low because it's compared to 99% uh, is very low. But we should compare with something relevant. And that is, before we consulted the consultant, the, the experiment reading, we only thought 10% of the time, uh, any drilling will result in much oil, right? So if we never did the experiment, we never consult the consultant, We'll just write it off because 10%, how do you justify the management? But with this reading, and this reading comes with high reliability. Whenever it's high, it's very reliable, right? Very high chances, right? We can present to our management and say, management, I think, uh, you know, we have been boosted by 750%, right? Our probability. And we think it is worth a try. So we pump in $1 billion. It may still go to waste. There may still be no oil. Bear in mind, right? Because this is probability, not proportionality. Probability means high chance you are right, but the moment you are wrong, you get zero oil, isn't it? Proportionality means you pump in one billion dollars, you might get back, you know, seven hundred fifty million. That's proportionate to your investment. No, that's probability here. You can be totally off, and just means you get no oil. But with 75% chance versus 10% chance, I think it's fair to say most companies, which are set up to take a bit of risk to get profit, right? So would be willing to at least consider. Yeah. So hopefully you have gets you have gotten some uh, feel about why Bayes theorem is so uh, widely used because it's so applicable, so generally applicable, and. Calculation-wise, it is also not that difficult, quite easy to understand. Although when you put in formula, it may look horrendous, but uh, the concept is actually very easy to grasp. I hope you have gotten something from this session. See you in the next lesson.